So Hudson here in Death Valley, 2,000 feet, Panamint Range, one of my absolute favorite photo locations on Earth on a really, really dramatic cloud day. And I'm testing out this new Robus 5570 carbon fiber tripod. It's a Series 3 lightweight, tall, systematic tripod that lets me get a leveling adapter, a bowl leveling adapter underneath a fluid head. It kind of fits a hole in the market. Uh, for you know a relatively affordable really well made tall series 3 lightweight tripod it's not quite as tall as my big Gitzo that I love and it weighs just a tiny bit more but it's about half the price and comes with a whole slew of accessories that would cost you even more with the Gitzo so uh, it's kind of an exciting tripod I'm really glad that they've made it uh, and I'll, I'll go back to the studio we'll go through some of the features in detail and, and I'll show you what I really like about it all right, so back here in the studio, first thing I want to talk about really quick is just the height of this Robus 5570. I got it sitting here right next to my, my favorite tripod of all time, the Gitzo 3543 XLS. Uh, sometimes people, you know, they have a laugh at me for the fact that my tripod's so tall, they're like, do, do you carry a stepladder around with you? But the fact of the matter is that sometimes when you get it set up just right at eye level, right where you want to be, and you're on a steep hillside, you need to throw that leg out way down the hillside in order to be able to maintain that eye level viewpoint that you want. Sometimes even with the legs down quite a bit on the two legs that are up with you on the hillside, that one that you throw out is fully extended this long. And it really opens up a whole wealth of comp compositional opportunities that you might not otherwise have to have a tall tripod. And sometimes you do want to get on a, on a little ladder and shoot down at your subject. It just opens a whole world of possibilities. Well, the good news is the Robus 5570, you know, it's not quite as tall as the Gitzo, but it's, it's pretty adequately tall. It's 70 inches tall at full extension, which, you know, just, just a wee bit shorter than I am. Uh, definitely a good, versatile, tall, center columnless, adaptable systematic tripod. We'll talk about weights in a second. All right, so let's compare folded length and weight really fast between the Gitzo 3543 XLS and the Robus 5570. So you can see it's a few inches shorter, makes it a little bit easier to fit into your check bag when you're traveling. Uh, Let's check out weights. I think this is this is the one spot where the Gitzo is really going to shine. And you have to remember, I've got really right stuff, rock claw metal feet, and uh, pro bicycle cork grip tape wrapping this tripod right now. So I'm going to use my little digital travel scale here. See what we got. 5.1 pounds on the Gitzo. It's supposed to just be five pounds, so you can probably chalk that up to to bicycle tape and those those metal rock claw feet. I'm going to tear this scale, check out the Robus, yeah, 5.5. So it's 40, it's, you know, four tenths of a pound heavier. Um, and that, you know, that may matter to some people. Matters to me when I'm going really light on an expedition. Uh, I like the fact that this one's taller and lighter, but is it worth twice as much money to you? I and mean, that, that really boils down to the question. If you can carry a little bit extra weight, this tripod gets you just about everything that this does at a huge cost savings. And we'll talk about the accessories that come with it, the fit and finish next. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the fit and finish uh, and some of the accessories that come with the Robus. Again, this is the 5570. Um, I'm a little bit astonished, to be honest with you. You know, the, the fit and finish on the Gitzo is, is pretty legendary. Uh, it looks a little bit dated, though, in comparison to this. It has these really nice modern touches. Uh, kind of has that feel of a, of a really right stuff tripod. It's got beautiful locks that let you set the legs in three different positions. It doesn't have the automatic sort of spring-loaded lock mechanism as you close it that the Gitzo has as it steps down. Uh, but you know, I'm, I'm pretty used to tripods not having that from, from years and years. It's a beautiful 10X carbon kind of woven pattern on the legs. Comes with these nice soft grips on two of the legs that are both protective and nice to grab a hold of when it's cold. Now, I'm, I'm a believer in wrapping your legs with a protective uh, cover. I like pro um, cork bicycle, uh, bicycle grip wrap that the road bikers wrap their bars with. It's ultra light, really durable, feels nice in the hand. So I'll, I'll probably go ahead and wrap this one naked leg in the lower half of these two other legs just to protect this tripod now that I'm using it. Um, it has a nice 
built-in mechanism for, for the systematic part with the camming uh, tool that lets you loosen up to, to replace the bowl with a flat top. Uh, and one of the things that's unique is the tripod comes with both. It comes with a nice lightweight flat plate for if you want to mount a ball head or, or you know something that, that can level itself. And another really nice thing is that even if you loosen this, it won't fall out. That's not so true with my more expensive Gitzo. I've had the, the camming mechanism come loose a couple of times in the last six months, and you just suddenly notice that your, that your tripod head is a little bit loose and might fall off. In this case, there's a little locking spring-loaded uh, control here that you have to actually pull out to release this, and there's a groove that catches a pin here. So to switch it out, is as simple as just dropping that in and then camming it back locked. And it comes with a nice hook on the bottom of its flat plate. So whether you want to use a bowl, whether you want to use a ball head or switch back and forth, they make it nice and easy for you. Just the fit and finish on this thing is really kind of incredible. And it comes with a whole boatload of accessories that other tripods that cost twice as much don't. For instance, it comes with points for if you're working in the sand or at the coast. It comes with adjustable flat feet if you're working in a studio setting on soft floors. And it comes with the typical kind of rubber pointed uh, feet along with a toolkit to adjust everything you might need and a nice padded soft bag for the tripod. My only complaint with that bag is that it won't fit in with the fluid head in it. But just overall, for the price of this thing, you know, and I, I can't guarantee it's going to stay at $550, but right now I feel that at $550, this tripod is an absolute steal. And I'm going to set up the links on my website for the fluid head section, where it basically gives you all the parts you need to set up a fluid head on your own center column tripod, on this Robus with this Robus 5570, and on the big Gitzo for those that, that have the money and want to save weight, say they're doing a lot of backcountry work. Uh, you know, it is nearly half a pound we're talking about and a little bit more height. But again, by the time you get all these accessories on that tripod, you're talking about $1,200 as opposed to $550. So a really huge price difference. So I'm going to reorganize the links on my site for those of you that want to build a, a systematic tripod or convert your center column tripod to a fluid head that just has those three sections. It'll give you the parts you need for each setup. Now, quick before I, I wrap this approach in the scene up, I got a lot of questions from people that are asking, you know, is the Manfrotto 500AH really the fluid head that I want for using a mirrorless camera or a DSLR? And they often ask about the bigger Manfrotto 504 or the 502 model or some other various models that have you know, a, a larger carrying capacity listed or that have variable drag or variable return spring tensions, things you can adjust. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say, no, I really think the 500 AH is what you're looking for. It's light, weighs two pounds. It's exactly the same as the Really Right Stuff BH55. It has just the right spring and control for whether you're using a DSLR or a mirrorless. It's just kind of perfect. Uh, lets you do nice smooth motions and I've used it with my old 400 3.5 aperture Nikkor lens with a really big heavy two times doubling uh, two times doubler a, a teleconverter you know a big heavy apparatus with a pro build camera like the Nikon D5 and it's rock solid and stable you know uh, in that situation, would I prefer to have a slightly bigger tripod head? Well, maybe, but it's rare that I'm shooting in that situation. I think if you're a pro birder, you're someone who's always working with an 800 millimeter, uh, maybe you want a bigger fluid head or a gimbal head. Um, but this head handled it fine. I'll be using this head that with that sort of setup in South Carolina at the... Uh, at the South Carolina uh, Raptor Rehabilitation Center with my workshop at the end of this month in Charleston, South Carolina. It works just fine and I don't feel the need to carry a separate gimbal because it does such a good job with a heavy load. And to be honest, you know, the size, the weight, the capability, I have a good friend, Andy Adkins, who I work with quite a bit that's an amazing professional filmmaker. He works with this head whenever he has to carry his gear on the back in wildland spaces. I mean, it's, it's light, it's accurate, and it works like a charm. So. 
I really would urge those of you considering buying a bigger, more complicated fluid head to just stick with this affordable, lightweight Manfrotto 500 AH. I really think it fits the bill for all of us who are toting around smaller cameras and combining stills and video and time lapse, or even just shooting stills and want a really simple to compose and adjust setup. It, it's really the bomb. All right, everybody, thanks so much. You guys have questions. Feel free to throw them at me. You can drop them in the comments down here below on YouTube. You know where to email them to me. I'm easy to reach. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next week.